Hey, 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 it's Agent Republic, and you know who that is. It's Suzanne King and Claudio and Cena. Thanks for joining us. Suzanne, today we're going to talk a little bit about vendor management yes. and the process, um, because it is a process, right? Yeah, definitely. So, um, well, it should be a process. It should be a process, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, it's having a framework around it. And I think a lot of agents can sometimes get a little bit lazy or, you know, not really have the mm. framework. They know it, but they're not doing it around yep. the vendor management. And it's all about like setting the vendor's expectations mm. through the sales campaign, right? Yeah. So I suppose a couple of things that you could maybe talk about the vendor and what they should mm. be expecting and, and what the agent can do to, I suppose, give them that certainty that everything is okay. Yes. And I think that's a really key point because sometimes it can be really easy, especially when you've got levels of success to then go, I could just skip doing these things because let's face it, vendor management actually requires effort and yeah. there's a lot of points to it. So sometimes when we're having a lot of success, it's easy to drop the things that are giving us the success that we need. And the other thing too is like, that's where we sometimes find the guys, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, business is slow. Yeah. And it's not because business is slow now, it's usually because back track yes. a few months they stop doing the things that were important. Yeah. So what are some of the really important things for vendor management? Okay, so first thing I would start, and we've all heard it, it's like the set to sell meeting. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's it's more about an expectation meeting yes. really. And you normally have this expectation meeting roughly, I would say like two days before the first open. Mm -hmm. And generally just, you have a little bit of dialogue around like, hey Suzanne, um, we've had some really good inquiry and some great hits on the web since we've gone mm -hmm. live with your property. Um, what I do with all my clients is to sit down with them a couple of days before just to make sure and run through a couple of things that I feel are important mm. over the next four weeks while we work together to get your yes. home sold. And you set that meeting and at the expectation meeting there, I won't take you through the whole process, but I really want agents to understand that. Talk about to the vendor benchmarks, yes. okay? Because they don't know how to measure, like mm. am I on track to sell? They think a thousand hits, wow, this is great. Yeah. Everyone wants to buy my house. And a thousand hits doesn't mean anything really. But mm. what we need to talk to them about is benchmarks. So the first <laughs> benchmark I would just generally say to them is, look, this Saturday, I'm really expecting Suzanne somewhere between, mm. you know, 10 to 15 groups through. And okay? don't BS it. Exactly. Don't BS it. Don't go, oh, we have a database of 5 billion people, but yet you haven't spoken to hardly any of them. Yeah. Don't BS it. Be realistic because the last thing you want to do is set an expectation that's too high. And then when the day actually comes, they feel like, you know, they've been yeah. let down because it's about relationship expectation as well. It's really managing that relationship. Absolutely. And then the second uh, benchmark that you would talk about is like contracts that you would expect to give yeah. out on the first Saturday. So if it's a good quality home, you might say, well, look, you know, for your home, Suzanne, I'm expecting somewhere between one and two contracts to be requested mm -hmm. either this weekend or by Monday, yes. okay? But again, like what Suzanne was saying, don't go and BS it. Be absolutely truthful. A home like that, you should get one to two. Exactly right. If it's a unit in Bondi and it's, you know, listed at 800,000, you know that you'd probably get like six to 10 contracts mm. out on a weekend. All right, so you might use that as a benchmark. Mm. So every benchmark mm. relates to exactly what that property is. Yeah, so know the area. Exactly. Know the area. Yeah. Third benchmark is people talking about price feedback mm. and saying like, Suzanne, you know, this weekend, I really want to be thinking that we get some feedback somewhere between maybe 800 to 850 for your property. So what million dollar listing isn't the thing that we need to benchmark our property prices on? It's a joke. <laughs> okay, you had me there going. <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes Claudio looks at me and he's like, no. Really? Suzanne, I am a bit slow. No. <laughs> it's at 5 a.m. club. I'm still Yeah, exactly right. Up. We're still there. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's the next benchmark. And then the other benchmark is talking about if they receive an offer on mm. the first weekend. Now, for all the people out there in the tribe, you know and I know that sometimes when you get that first offer, you take it to the owner and, and you know what they say, Suzanne, they just, the owner goes, well, it's the first weekend. Let's just yeah. see what happens the next weekend. And my property's special. Exactly. <laughs> and they think, you know, well, that, that offer's going to be there the weekend mm. after. And sometimes that first buy that gives you that first offer is the one that wants mm. to buy it. So if you set the expectation with your vendor and say, yeah. look, Suzanne, if we do get an offer on the first weekend, please, let's just consider it, not discount it. Mm. Because I've had in the past where some vendors have gone, look, it's the first weekend. Mm. Let's just see what happens the second weekend. And then they go to the second weekend. They don't have that sort of euphoria that they've had in the first weekend of the yeah. open. And they go, oh, we'll take that offer from that buyer. And what happens to that buyer? They're, They're gone. Cold. They're cold. You know? Exactly. So this is about just managing those expectations. So I would say to you, make sure that you have those benchmarks set up from mm. the initial one. Yep. Yes, you do the vendor reports. Yes, you, you give your vendors a call daily yeah. as you should anyway. Well, well, it's just something that I would like to talk about because sometimes I think we can have a set structure. Oh, I'm going to call them daily. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Now, the big ticket items, you want to have that really set and structured. But think about it. It's relationship. 
One person is going to be different to another person. One person might want to be called every day, another person might not. So it's really valuable to say, hey, how often would you like me to communicate with you? How often would you like me to call? Because then you're being personalized. You're not like every other agent that has a tick box activity because people feel that. And we don't want to have that feeling because, you know, we talk a lot about your energy introduces yourself. So for the big important things, yes, make sure it's structured and you tick those things off. But then for some of the other ones that have a bit of flexibility around them, actually ask the question, how often would you like to hear from me? And then obviously, do that. And you might even want to educate them and say, look, you know, most people like to hear from me daily because of X, Y, and Z. But the last thing you want to be doing if someone says, no, I trust you, I don't need to hear from you daily, mm. and then you start calling them daily, well, you're becoming a nuisance. So yeah. it's got to be personalized. Absolutely. And, and the other thing too, you know, I see a lot of agents when they send their progress reports, yeah. vendor progress reports to their vendor. One thing I notice is they put like, you know, a person's name and left message. Now I've got to tell you guys, like if I was a client and yes. I saw, and I'm paying you like $20,000 commission, yes. and out of the 30 people that came through on Saturday and 15 of them you had LM left message, I'm going to be like really upset with you. I'm yes. paying you to contact these people and get some really good quality yes. feedback. So please do not just put LM left message, okay? Because that to me would say like, you're not doing your job. I'm paying you 20,000 yep. and we're not getting anywhere. So be really careful of that. And also the other thing I would really say, Suzanne, is with vendor management, good agents are caring, but they're also candid. Good, yes. You've got to have balance. Don't be, yes. you know what, if, you, if, you, if, if you're too caring, it becomes dysfunctional. Yeah. And if you'd like hit them over the head, as we call it, which is not great, <laughs> no. okay? And they start to resent you. Be so, don't be, so don't be too candid either. Mm. Have a real good even balance with your vendor yeah. management. But the main, I suppose, message from us is keep it real, Keep it like right on where you want to take it to, but make sure you've got a good process around your vendor mm -hmm. management. And if you've really enjoyed this video today and you want daily tips, make sure you join us on Facebook Live at 5 a.m. because we'll have the 5 a.m. club and we'll be talking through every single day what you can be doing, Monday to Saturday, every single day, what you can actually be doing. Absolutely. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time.